Dana White recently revealed a small insight of how Fight Island is being prepared to hold UFC events. He posted this on his Instagram saying, This is the first look at the testing and infrastructure being built on Fight Island. This experience is going to be so badass for my fighters and my staff. Hashtag in Abu Dhabi. Khabib Nurmagomedov commented on the post saying, You made this? You crazy Dana? Dana White responded back saying, At Khabib Nurmagomedov, time to have some fun my friend. A three round La Havoit bout between Ovin St. Pru versus Shamil Gamzatov has been rebooked for a UFC card on 20 2nd of August. Ovin St. Pru is coming off a split decision loss to Ben Rothwell and Shmil Gamzatov is coming off a split decision win over Glidson Abru. Mike Perry on the Aaron Hawani's MMA show has some harsh words for Nate Diaz. He said that he's skinny and weak and said it would be a similar fight to Mickey Gall. I think he's a, um, a skinny weak little f like Mickey Gall. I mean I respect what he's done in the sport. Um, he plays the guard game and jujitsu and he thinks he can box with that little weak ass punches that he's got, little, little salt and pepper punches. Um, he doesn't stand a chance to hit me hard enough. Um, I'd hit him on the feet, same way Jorge Masvidal did. And I'd play his guard, I'd get half guard, sit on top of him. It'd, be, it'd look exactly the same as the Mickey Gall fight did, to be honest with you. So if you guys like that fight, then yeah, you'll probably like the Nate Diaz fight too, because he's he's a little more durable. He'll probably try to stand there and um, box back with me, but my my power punches just I'll sit him down. I, everybody knows he's durable, so I'll bust that eye open again. Same. I mean, what can I say? I mean, look, I'm not. That's not hate. I'm not hating on Nate Diaz. He's done things in the sport. He's made money. Good for him, dude. Um, I've always thought I'd beat that guy. And I mean, it's as simple as that. We're talking about one-on-one -on -one in the ring fighting and I win. Dan Hooker on Sirius XM says that he wants to fight either Tony Ferguson or Charles Oliveira next. It's kind of any fight like that. Any fight like that where you, where you go out there, uh, you leave it all out there. Um, those fights I can I can walk away from, I'm happy. You know, I say there's, there's two ways that I lose a fight. And that's either you beat me fair and square or my body shuts down. Well, I went out there Saturday and I got beat fair and square. I tip my hat to Dustin Poirier and that's that. Yeah, well, they, I saw that they um, had a little reshuffle of the rankings around and, and I'm still at number five. I didn't get I didn't get shifted around, which is cool for me. I'm happy with that. I'm not moving down in the rankings off a loss. But yeah, we're going we're gonna to have to see how, how things play out because 100% I want to get back in there. I want to get back in there before the end of the year. And it'll just be, it'll just come down to who that's going to be against, um, who, who really steps wants to get back in there and mix it up too because I saw Dustin moved above Tony because that, look, the two fights that make the most sense is Tony Ferguson and Dustin Poirier and then me versus Charles Oliveira. Like those two fights make the most sense and I am 100% on board with them making the most sense. But Dustin's come out and said that he doesn't want to fight until next year. So it comes down to Tony. If Tony wants to get back in there this year, he wants to get back to action and just um, he's itching to fight, which I know, you know, he's the kind of, he's like me. He wants to get back out there and he, he's itching to fight. And I would 100% take that fight. And I'm not going to turn down a uh, second crack at the number three ranked fighter in the world. I remember my, my first crack at number six was Edson Barboza and that turned out like shit. So my second fight was Ala Quinn and so that one went a lot better. So I think I, I think I do a better work a second time around. Michael Bisping on the Believe in Me podcast speaks on why fighters should avoid brawls inside the octagon. A good example of that is Robert Whittaker, right? Tremendous mm. fighter. He was on a tear, but he had those two crazy wars with Yoel Romero. And I feel the human body, we've only got so many of them in us, you know? And as a fighter, they take your toll. And, and the more wars you go through, the shorter career you're going to have. Now, we don't know if that's why Adesanya knocked him out. We don't know if it was just a bad night at the office. But war like that yeah you want to avoid them it's what fans want to see it's what they pay to see it's what the fans dream of but it's not what a fighter should dream of because those as i say you've only got so much shelf life you've only got so much 
so many wars in you. And the more punches you take, the shorter your career is going to be. That's yes. why Floyd Mayweather, 50 and all now, that's why he's had such a long career because he was just a master of defense. He yeah. would never get caught. He never allowed himself to get into the brawls and he would always fight smart. And then ultimately, that's what you want to do. Jarzinho Rosenstrike in a recent interview with MMA Junkie speaks on his upcoming fight against Junior Dos Santos. One thing is uh, still the same. Um, I'm always going to win fights and yeah, uh, I'm helping people out. Uh, as soon as I got an opportunity, I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna do it. And yeah, uh, I I don't replace Junior from now and in the in the past. You know, it's like it's Junior. It's still the Junior and he, he have his skills. Yeah, it's not that you can say, mm, I'm gonna walk past him like, no. He have his experience, he's a big name, he did a lot of things for the sports, uh, for the sport, and um, yeah, I'm, I'm, stay f I'm focused, and I'm gonna stay focused till the end. As I say before, he's a nice guy, I, he have my respect, and uh, most of the other fighters, even Francis, uh, over him, they start doing trash talk, like, you know, um, they underestimate me and stuff. Probably be good for them. And yeah, this fight is different. Um, I got this opportunity. I say yes to it. And yeah, I mean, we're gonna go in there and, and fix it. 100%. Um, we all right there. Um, um, right now on the same card, uh, the champion's gonna fight Danny Cormier. Um, and then we're gonna see who's next. And uh, by that time, I'm gonna be still around. Uh, stay active and uh, wait for my chance. Because right now my dream is still alive. Uh, it's kind of holding up, but uh, nothing can stop me uh, going to my dream. matter of hours, John has waved the white flag and said, hey, I have not been cleared. I need to get my to heal first before I can fight. So he has volunteered you, Vic. I thought you guys would have drawn straws or, or paid paper rock scissors or, or something. Dumb wars. He said, nope, you're up first. So bring it on. Balls in your court, bro. Bro, balls in your court. So, just finished my fight, and I knew there was going to be some haters. I see you. And now you're going to say my name. I don't let nobody get away to say my name. So, John McAdesi and James Vick, whoever wants to go first, I'm signing up for August. See whoever wants to go first. You guys can text each other, call each other, and figure out which cream puff is going to get smashed first. Let me know. I'll see you in August. And Kenny Florin on the Anakin Florin podcast speaks on Mike Perry's win over Mickey Gall. I think he was kind of making a bigger deal about it. Um, and I thought Mickey Gall took him way too lightly or perhaps, you know, thought he was going to run right through him. You're not going to run right through Mike Perry. That guy hits way too hard and he's got a lot of experience for you to think that you're just going to walk through some guy like that. Um, it, it's why I picked him. Um, you know, Mickey Gall has a knack for kind of getting hit out there and kind of brawling a little bit. Uh, but more impressively, I thought Mike Perry, the way he was mixing things up, he was mixing in the takedowns. Everyone was talking about how Mickey Gall had the better ground game. Uh, you know, when you're getting taken down, getting your guard passed and mounted like that, um, I, I think Mickey Gall is going to have to go back to the drawing board uh, in more ways than one. Um, Mike Perry looked great overall. I think he looked a little bit like uh, he was kind of trying to figure out uh, Mickey Gall a little bit in that first round. But once he 
felt comfortable. Uh, I thought he just really took over in those second and third rounds uh, and, and dominated him. Um, and, and again, it's that much more impressive considering he didn't have a, a, a full camp and probably had limited access to training partners and all that stuff. So I'm curious to see which team he's going to pick after all this. Um, you know, it seems like he's obviously been having some issues with his coaches and training and, you know, paying coaches and all that stuff and maybe some financial issues. I hope he rectifies that. Um, you know, whatever you think about Mike Perry, uh, you got to appreciate, um, you know, his heart, his determination, his love for the game. And, and um, you know, I, I hope he, he finds the right coaches and the right match that's going to help him get better as a fighter.